You support mostly white racist bikers and white supremacists. Boy, have I heard this a lot the past couple of weeks. It's actually a daily thing now with someone accusing me of being a racist. Do you want to know something? I don't care what those pecker pullers have to say. I've never thought I'd see the day when this scene would become a damn PC successful. I would have to say, I believe this lifestyle has become unrecognizable to what I was brought up in. The rub has destroyed what it meant to be a biker. These rubs have brought their PC views and turned the image of bikers into a bunch of pussies. Sad state of affairs, especially when being a biker is a lifestyle most people live on a daily basis. I was asked by a subscriber what I thought about a guy who came from a prison gang to a motorcycle club. My response is simple. What of it? And why does it matter when someone comes from from, as long as they are a good brother. I know it will be hard for someone like a rub to understand, but if they have your back, it doesn't matter one bit to me. I often look at some of the people doing these biker content shows and just shake my head. The other day I was sent one a douchebag running off at the mouth again. Some shit about a guy making some type of posting about what he should sew on his vest. As always, this idiot went on a 45 minute spew about what is right and what is wrong. This is the same idiot, by the way, who refused to turn patches in and had a woman do it for him when he finally did it. One thing I know, if this dude was a part of a prison gang, I don't know, slash motorcycle club you would call it, it wouldn't have ended well for him. This is the big difference between a traditional motorcycle club and one made up with cross connections in the prison system. This type of club, and there are many of them, run by a whole different set of protocols than traditional motorcycle clubs. These protocols I call hybrids. They run strictly on prison laws. Again, these two sets couldn't be more different. Though so again, why do I talk about this? It's because the one who asked this question was snotty about it, I guess. It's easy to say, these are the motorcycle gangs the media talks about. 1% clubs shouldn't allow them. Let me be as frank as I can on that statement. Especially since I know some people in these organizations. Motorcycle clubs are not gangs. One thing that 1% clubs are not going to do is get involved in prison politics or the game as I call it. Again, everything that goes on in these setups are guided by what happens in the prison system. The last thing a 1% club wants to do is go after a member of one of these organizations on the street because of a patch. What happens on the street will have repercussions their members in the joint. The one percenters do not have a huge amount of members in the system. Most of the time they will only have one or two people in a certain prison. On the other hand, these other guys have armies behind bars. Besides the tone of the question, it's actually a good subject to talk about. Especially when many people don't know these types of groups exist in the motorcycle club community. Most examples of this type of groups in this category will be of only one race. For example, all white or all Hispanic, just like it is behind the walls. The people who leave prison bring those rules out into the street. Many times you won't he even hear about these types of groups because they don't advertise it. Unlike many clubs who have members showing who they are on Facebook, these guys won't be advertising it. I know, the next question coming. So how would I hook up with one of these clubs? Well, from what I hear, 
A person has to have a deep connection with a few members of the club. A club like this isn't a traditional club. They just don't take anyone. It isn't about doing a hang around and prospect period to get in. Things are a lot more in depth than that. Again, how would I know? Like I said before, I know some people in these types of setups from my old neighborhood. Mostly ex-gangbangers. I personally wouldn't recommend anyone try to get involved in these groups. Most of the time, over 99.9% .9 of people wouldn't make it in these clubs. I was once told, you have two choices when you join up, prison or the grave. These types of clubs are in it to win it. As I always say, not only do they have a brotherhood on the streets, they also have one behind the bars as well. Another reason I say not to try to and get involved, these organizations are players on many different levels. It's not about just riding in these clubs, but something very different and more serious. Again, many people are not ready to risk everything they have to get involved in these types of clubs. It basically comes down to playing the game. For those who don't know what I mean, it comes down to making that money. It also comes with stricter rules and life and death situations, especially in the prison system. Motorcycles are just a shared interest. They really are not the focus of the club. If you've been paying attention, then you know what the main purpose is. With that said, I've met some of these members who can throw on the miles same as any other club member. Most of the time, members have been with street gangs and this is the structure they are used to. The ideology. Ideology. These types of people have would never work in a traditional club. You have to remember, these people are used to the high intensity of gang life and all that comes with it. Traditional motorcycle clubs would be boring. Traditional motorcycle clubs are set up for a deep pursuit of brotherhood, with motorcycles being the factor that brings everyone together. Again, traditional motorcycle clubs are not gangs. This is where the media and cops have it all wrong when they use motorcycle gangs. To be easier to understand, gangs are used to make their money and being out of the limelight. That's what they're used to. Well, at least the smart ones. Motorcycle clubs are the opposite. They love doing charity work and helping their community. Something the damn cops will never admit. It only takes a few to make a motorcycle club look bad. This is something I say all the time. Something that is actually sad, given that motorcycle clubs do so much for the community and to help people. This is why I believe so strongly in AB, MRF, and NCOM. These organizations are trying to combat the false propaganda. Just because someone wears a diamond doesn't make them a criminal. Most, if not all, are hard-ass workers. Diamond wearers just want to be able to go to work and support their families. Sure, they like to party hard. But that's where I believe it ends. Except for only a small few. So I tried my best to explain the difference in the two types of clubs. This is a subject not talked about often because many people don't know they exist. It's always interesting learning that different structures of motorcycle clubs exist. And yes, there is an underworld of the motorcycle club community. Like anything in the underworld. It should be left alone and people should always look to join a traditional motorcycle club. Again, two choices. Prison or death. These are the choices you shouldn't look forward to unless you, your heart is totally in the game and that's your life. This is just my two The show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. 
Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the throttle today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!